dark pools. Sounds mysterious and honestly kind of awesome, right? Well, that wasn't the intent when dark pools were created in the 1980s. The intent was to allow institutions such as pension funds and mutual funds to transact trades at discounted commission rates and to have the available liquidity to make their large trades. As of late, dark pools do seem to be in the eye of the retail trader and the public lately. That could be because maybe the shenanigans that happened with GameStop and AMC when it brought to light that sometimes the markets aren't exactly fair. Nonetheless, dark pool exchanges have been quite controversial, and it does leave retail traders feeling like they're being manipulated and sto- or and or stole it from stolen from <laughs> excuse me in all honesty retail traders should feel that way so let me start with what exactly is the dark pool the dark pool is a private exchange for trading securities it allows institutional investors to trade without exposure until the trade has already been filled so what exactly does that mean it basically means that an institution is allowed to hide their trade until it's been filled. And in layman terms, it means you could be buying a stock without knowing that there is an institutional seller right above you selling prices lower. And I'll show some examples uh, shortly. Are dark pools legal? I get asked this question uh, very often, actually. And the crazy answer is absolutely yes it is. When institutions place a trade in the dark pool, there are two rules that need to be followed once the trade has been filled. And as far as I'm aware of, these are the only two rules that must be followed. Rule number one, if the trade is placed in the continental U.S., say you're in Florida on your yacht and you place a trade through the dark pools, and that's just an exaggerated example, um, since it is stateside, you will have three hours to uh, report your trade. Now, rule number two, kind of the same, but also different. And this is one rule that I use to help trade in the markets. So rule number two is, if a trade is placed in the dark pool, but you're physically, or the, I guess you could say you hit send, confirm and send, while you are outside of the US, we'll say you're in London, and then that trade is filled, you do not have to report that trade for 24 hours. Let me show you an example. So you look at my screen, you see a bunch of lines. These are late buy prints and sell prints. Well, actually, you know what? Before I get into that, let me go ahead and explain what is going on when I was saying you could be buying a stock in the face of a seller and not realize it. So this is the time in sales, and here's the level two. So right here, the bid are the buyers, and right here, the ask are the sellers. And every transaction that occurs is reported on the time and sales window. Think of this as one big receipt. So imagine you want to buy, you're wanting to buy some of the spiders, the S&P 500 ETF. You're wanting to buy it at, we'll just use this example at 48.50, or sorry, $408.50. But there's a seller over here at, we'll say 409, that's sitting right here, but that's unloading we'll say millions and millions of shares. You won't want to buy the spiders knowing that there is a seller right here that's not going to, price is not going to go up without the seller out of the way. So in this case, in in this example, if this seller is here, no one knows he's here or he or she is there until the next day. But the price has already moved since then. So that's an example of your trade being hidden. Now, as far as what I mean by trades being reported late, and for that example, I'll just pull up my Live All Pro and give you an example here. So this is the spiders, and I will go ahead uh, to recently. That we'll say uh, May second was a really big day in the market. There was, while it's loading, I'll go ahead and cover it here. There was, let me pull up my plus 10 mil dark pool print levels. Shrink this down out of your way. 
there was at uh, the price of 412 and seven cents there was 15.8 million late buy prints i deemed them buy print simply because we closed above them we're now obviously below them but nonetheless it is a important price value to recognize and a way to um, decide to take which direction you should take your trades okay I'll explain the shares here in a minute, but I just want to point this part out real fast. So right here, where all the shares are 251,000 shares. See there, they go about right there, and then here's some more right here, so on and so forth. And they're all for the same price, $412 and basically seven cents. Well, what I want you to take note of is all these shares, or all these trades that were trying to act, transacted for the same amount of shares, we're all done for the same trade price. But right here, this column where it says market, that's where the current bid and ask was, so the buyers and sellers. So basically, what that means is someone, it is saying someone's going to fill at 412 and 7 cents while the spiders was at 410. Or even further, we go even further down here, 412, but the spider was at 408. Or 4A409. You, you see the point where I'm getting at there is they're not lining up. They should be very close. But so what does that mean? Especially in the Spiders ETF, that is a very liquid uh, ETF. So what does that mean? These trades at the 4.1207 were done the prior day, and they're just being reported the next day. So that is an example of the level of, or sorry, of the second um, rule that they must report them within 24 hours. Let me zoom out here. So that is the late buy prints, or sorry, the, the late prints that follow the 24 hour rule. Now comes that million dollar question that I get asked quite a bit as well. So how do you use dark pool, dark pool information in your trading? Like how can you use this information to get an edge in the market? And I use the dark pool information to get two, we'll say two data points in my trading plan. The first method that I use is I need to know where all the late buy and sell prints are. Approximately about 90% of the time, the late buy and sell prints paint a very clear picture on which direction the market is going. Think of it this way. They are trades that are so big, so valuable, that you do not want anyone to see your hand until after your trades are already done so no one can make a decision based off of it. Because if you think of it this way, say you're Goldman Sachs and you're wanting to, we'll say, sell uh, $20 billion worth of the SPY, and you don't, and how else, uh, if you're, and then say you're, uh, you say you're me, you're Cody, and you want to buy, 10 billion dollars of the spy i don't know if i said the <laughs> the math right but basically not as much as what they're selling <laughs> imagine i wanted to buy it but or nonetheless it doesn't matter how much i'm wanting to buy really if, if i'm wanting to buy it and but i see a really big seller i'm not going to buy it because there's a big seller there and then from a selling standpoint if no one's coming up to buy it from you you're losing money because you're not going to make money unless there's a buyer or a buyer to take it from you. So in that aspect, you need to know where the buyers and sellers are, the late prints that are so big, so therefore you know which way the market is going. And I'll use this as an example right here. I'll use this as a first example. So on the chart, you can see um, right here, there is 20 million late sell prints, which is big. Anything above 10 million shares and late prints is uh, significant, it's worth acknowledging. So in this case, for the first data point that I use in my trading plan, actually, let me, let me take it a step back. So let's forget this one. I know this may be going back and forth, but it'll make sense. There was 19 million buy prints on this day, late buy prints. It rallied up and anything above 10. So there is two 10 plus million days right there, consolidated, went back down consolidated no greater than 10 million prints and then see this green line down here at the bottom those are late buy prints that means on this day they were buying it but then reported it the next day up here while well, the candle is all the way up here 
So that was 9.2 million share prints. And then another 10 million, another 10 million. You get the point. You rallied up. We go, go, go. Then boom, 20 million late sell prints. So in this example, like I'm saying, in this data point, this is the last, or that's the last 20 million print we got right here. So at this point, um, I watch it. We close below it. I'm like, okay. To me, the path of re least resistance is now down. Boom, another day right here. 10.3 million cell prints. We continue lower. And we haven't had another one up until recently, just this Monday. There was 15.8 million at 4.1207. And they appeared to be buy prints. And the reason they're buy prints, because we closed above it. We rallied up, got rejected. And now, regardless of this is buying or selling, we're now below it. The path of least resistance at this moment is still down. So I use this information to know that I should be net short in my portfolio. I should be shorting stocks more than I am going long. So that being said, since I need to be short, what do I do? I look for short for stocks that have a setup to short. And before I carry on to if the stock, um, sorry, if it's uh, with stock to short. Before I carry on to that, there's a little bit more I should tell you about the late prints. So that way, I that way it makes complete sense. So the late prints are identified by having the same share size. So if I pulled it up here, like I said, the 251,000 late prints. I could pull up any day and see them. Like I'll go to Wednesday. I guarantee we'll see 251,000 prints, and they'll be late. And they used to be 501,000, 502,000, 503,000, but then in about 2018 or so, they started cutting it in half, and so we get 251,000. And today, actually, I spotted a another one. They're dividing their 251s by two. While this is loading. I'll show you it right here. This is Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge. We'll go down. See, 251 right here. Today's dark pool print is at 413.66. Then I can find another four, uh, 413.66 to 70. Oh, no, that's not one. That's 60. Right here. They cut it in half. So, nonetheless. And right here. Late buy prints, or sorry, not I can't say late buy prints, but late prints. Transacted at 4.16.41 when the spy was at 4.17. So to identify late prints, you use the share size. And then it is deemed buy, a buy print, if it closes above the print price, or it's a late sell print if it closes below the late price. I hope you find that helpful. Now, like I said, I use it in, for trading two different ways. Right now, I need to be net short. What's another one? I took this trade recently. I need to be net short. I find out a, a setup. And then within that setup, I need to be short. Then I go within, I go diving into the dark pool, if you will. And <laughs> sounds super cheesy, but cool. At the same time, I go swimming with the sharks in the dark pool and find out where the dark pool is trading in a specific stock. So in this case, this is Abbott Labs. If you're part of the simpler trading community, we took this trade live. But this is a bear flag formation, so we have a swing low. Consolidates going higher, going higher. And so I go looking into the dark pool, right? So go look and look, there is a 570,000 shares right here. That is 11% of this stock's average volume. That is a big one transaction. One transaction was 11% of the stock's average daily vo um, volume. It was right here at the top. I put where um, the trade was placed and we closed below it. I'm like, all right, this looks like they're selling it. And then whenever on this candle, we closed below this trend line I drew, that's when we took a short, wrote it down. And I believe we got out of the trade on this day actually for about 97% return in a few days. So step one, path of least resistance. So we'll put late prints. 
are the big institutions, or we'll say the big institution, whoever it is, are they buying or selling? As of right now, they are selling. So we need to be short. So next, I find a setup that I like to trade. In this case, a bear flag. Look, you also see that there was a print up here. Since this print, look at that. It's double what this one is. Since that print, flush down, flush down, consolidate. Boom, another print. Next leg down. So like I said, late prints. Next one, step two. You find your setup. And then where are the prints within that setup? And then therefore you know which direction to take the trade. So that is how I use the dark pool information to, to make my trade decisions. So once you can get on the right side of the market, you find the trend, the pattern, and everything works together, then you have a high probability of trade. So in conclusion, though institutions that trade in the dark pool have an unfair advantage, you too can have an unfair advantage in your trading plan if you know how to read the tape. That's all reading prints are, it's volume. A dark pool is just a cool, catchy word. All it is is volume and reading the tape, which is done in day trading and done in all sorts of trading. So it really doesn't matter what your style of trading is or what you're trading, but if you could add institutional volume to your setups, I do believe you can have a huge edge in this market. So I hope you found this helpful in understanding dark pools and how to utilize it in your trading plan. Take care, everybody. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me.